If you're a reader, then you definitely know what it's like to have people talk about a series and absolutely love it. And you not having read it, you're just feeling like you're missing out. For me, this series has always been Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. And more specifically, the Farseer trilogy. Because everyone has told me that I have to start with the Farseer trilogy before I continue on to the rest of the books. And so I decided that this month is going to be the time that I will finally read the Farseer trilogy and find out what's up with this Fitz guy. <laughs> I'll update you when I finish the first book. Okay, so I finished Assassin's Apprentice and... <sighs> I'm a bit underwhelmed, I can't lie. You know when you can say objectively that a book is well written, the author has clearly honed their craft for many years and they're accomplishing exactly what they want to accomplish, but it doesn't click for you? That's how I felt about this book. There was no point at which I wanted to pick it up. Robin Hobb has this very classical, lyrical, almost fairy tale esque writing style at certain points. That's fine, like she does that very, very well. I don't like it though. And so I feel like everything that I say after this, you have to kind of remember that in the context of the fact that I don't like the writing style because the writing style is how I'm receiving this story. Like it just will affect and permeate every single part of my experience of this book, this series, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe book two will like lift me out of this. I think this book's biggest crime for me was that it was boring. What did he say? I don't care about fits. I don't, nothing happens until the last 100 pages maybe. And even then at that point, I didn't care. Every time a new character was introduced, I struggled so hard to feel any sort of attachment to them. And more than that, I know this is gonna sound heartless, but I really do not like the animal companion trope. It's twice here, okay? And it just, I don't know, it really takes a lot for me to enjoy an animal companion. And here I didn't, at all. Also, there's this like little subplot with the red ships attacking the coast. Like it's vaguely mentioned here and there, but then at one point I feel like it's like totally forgotten. What's up with that? And like, again, I get it that it's set up for the trilogy, but I don't care. And I feel like Fitz is like super getting invested. Like, oh my God, the red ships, blah, blah, blah. And like, I get it. Like murder is bad. Pillaging is bad. But for me to feel invested in it, to feel invested in this conflict, the way that Fitz seems to be, and he's probably going to get more invested as well. I need some sort of pull. Man, I was just really honestly disappointed. Like, this is the book that you guys are so obsessed with. Okay. I also audiobooked this. And so, I don't know, like some people say that the audiobook is bad. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. Now, little spoiler thing. So, skip over to Royal Assassin. I hate when animal companions are just there to be killed off. And it happens not once, not twice, but three times. And yeah, I get it that Nosy technically didn't die the first time, but like she did end up dying like at the end. <laughs> like, okay, it was cute. Like, oh, Nosy's alive and Nosy saves him, whatever. Like, it, okay, that was cute. I was like, oh, okay, that's like, you know, it's cute. But in the whole grand scheme of things, when it happened the first time, I was like, oh. Then he meets Smithy, right? The other dog. And I was like, okay, so this is the animal companion that everyone loves because everyone says how the animal companion here is like the best animal companion ever. And then Smithy dies as well. And I'm like, are you kidding? By the time this series is over, Fitz is gonna have a fucking pet cemetery just of the dogs that he have died for him. It's such a cheap way to introduce emotion into the narrative by being like, oh, look at this cute little puppy. Aren't they so cute? Aren't they like amazing how they helped the main character? <coughs> Oopsie, they died. Aren't you sad? Yeah, it just really frustrated me and I was so bored like the entire time. However, objectively speaking, it was well-written. I know it's a me thing. I know it's a me thing. It's not a Robin Hop thing. And so that's why I'm giving it the 0.25 extra. But if I wasn't making this video and if I didn't make a promise to my friends, I would not be continuing. Here's to hoping that Royal Assassin is better. Alright, so I finished Royal Assassin and I have great news because I liked it way more than I did Assassin's Apprentice. That being said, it still wasn't a three star for me, which I'm so sorry, but I feel like this is voting well for the rest of the series. Now, I feel like my favorite parts were all at the start because I think the start of this book is actually like 
super, super strong. It really made me understand why we were doing so much setup in the previous book because the scenes with Shrewd and the Red Ship Raiders and Molly, they would not have worked as well as they did had I not had the context of everything that, well, maybe not everything, but had I not had that context of what happened in Assassin's Apprentice. Everything is in context. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Um, Ketrican, I was so right about her because I love her so much. I'm, uh... <laughs> I had a theory <laughs> which proved to be wrong, but my friends like made fun of me so bad for it Anyway, learning more about the fool was great I'm not like as invested in the fool as I'd want to be or as other people are and Fitz still annoys me But at least I have characters now that I like semi root for Burich also Dude, I'm reading this series for Ketrican and Burich at this point. Unfortunately after that like bang of a beginning things took a dip <laughs> and I feel so bad saying that because I wanted to love it but once again I felt like we got into this lull of just seeing what's going around buck keep Go Go girl, girl, give us nothing. not solving problems that then lead to the way this book ends I was like fits bro <laughs> maybe it's time to do some of that you know assassin is in the title get to work bitch also the animal companion no offense it's kind of giving free that makes me uncomfortable. Don't like it. At least the same thing didn't happen as what happened as an Assassin's Apprentice that like really annoyed me, but it's giving furry and I don't like furry, okay? I don't like it, I don't like it. It weirds me out. Also, I swear, all I do in this keep is complain, wander around, get sad, and I'm so sick of reading about these people drinking their elf bark tea and getting drunk. It's boring, I don't care. This is editing Vera and I'm just updating you all. Uh, to show you that I'm just finishing up my tea because I was drinking it in solidarity with my guy Fitz. But yeah, anyway, so this book still like way better, way better and huge points for that start than Assassin's Apprentice. Don't care. Um, there's nothing in me that wants me to continue, but I'm committed. Moving on to the spoiler section, move on to what I ended up thinking of the whole series in my Assassin's Quest segment, but spoilers. <sighs> First off, the good. The fact that Burridge calls Fitz son at the very end. Oh my gosh, that was so cute. Another thing, I'm slowly starting to get the lady patience hype because that scene in Assassin's Apprentice where she's like, oh, you should have been mine, whatever. I read it and I was like, oh, this should be very emotional. Why is it not hitting me? I, I could feel empathy for her. Like if I, if someone that I didn't know said that to me, I wouldn't have like a visceral emotional reaction. Now that I'm getting to know lady patience better and better, I'm starting to get more emotionally attached to her and to how she sees fits. And so that's very cute. And like I said, Ketrican, like that scene where she rallies the people to go fight. Oh man, it was so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I thought Verity was gay because I was like, Ketrican is so hot and you're telling me that you don't want to like sleep with her? You're telling me you don't want to- and she's your wife, first of all. And you're telling me you don't want to sleep with her and you don't want to like get to know her? Are you kidding me? So I was like, clearly he's gay. And that's going to be like a storyline of, you know, a person in power, the king in waiting, juggling his sexuality with versus his loyalty to the throne, I guess, and like his responsibilities. Nope. Turns out he was actually just too tired skilling because once he sleeps with Ketrican, he gets so horny and um, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Honestly, power couple and I really like them together. So slay, I guess. Pretty much that's the end of the good for me. My biggest problem is why is Regal still alive? Or is he alive? He clearly has no problem staging assassinations because he tries to trip Ketrican, right? Um, to like make her have an accident. She's the queen in waiting. Surely if you can stage an assassination attempt on the queen in waiting, you can do it to the second prince, right? Like oh, clearly, clearly. Also, Chade and Fitz, so freaking useless. Your king is dying. You're telling me that you will not step in between the king and his son to protect the king from his son? because, oh, you're a king's man and blah, 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 that would go against King Shrewd's wishes. King Shrewd is dying. He's dying. Get Regal out. Get your fucking ass up and work. And clearly we are shown later on that Fitz is able to like look past him being a king's man if he thinks he's still being or acting for the good of the nation or for the good for the king because Brondi swears fealty to Fitz in the end and Fitz is like, yep, yeah, that's okay. What? 
And you're telling me that there's no way they can stage an accident to get rid of Regal? Are you serious? I just feel like going into book three, everything that I that we are working with, uh, because Fitz is now like effectively dead, right? In the eyes of everyone. Regal, I presume, is gonna become like the king, right? All of the problems that we still have to deal with other than the red ships are all self-made. Why is this next book so thick? In my opinion, the way this was written is also dishonest to like human nature because if we have a problem, we will get rid of it. In real life, if there was a situation like this, a Fitz and a Chade would get rid of Regal. Why? Yeah, why is Regal still here? And not only that, why is he such a cartoonish villain? He's cackling, he's... Uh, since the start, he was like giving Fitz dirty looks in the hallways and everything. So he's not an interesting villain for me to root against either because he just feels like a mustache twirling evil guy <laughs> like he does. So yeah, I'm really frustrated. I don't want to continue with the series, but I will. And hopefully Assassin's Quest, I don't know, changes my mind. Like I said, Royal Assassin was a huge improvement for me over Assassin's Apprentice. And so I'm kind of hoping that Assassin's Quest will be similar. I I actually don't know. I just assume it's gonna be more drinking, more elf bark tea and more furry, so. My friend Diego said that he really felt seen by Fitz and the way that Robin Hobb wrote Fitz, that it was very true to his experience of growing up. Um, and okay, see, maybe I just don't have the experience of being a teenage boy and so I can't relate to Fitz, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure Robin Hobb wasn't a teenage boy either and she wrote him, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I think that's the biggest problem. I don't have any reason to care, so I don't want to continue, but I shall, and I will update you when I'm finished. All right, so I finally finished Assassin's Quest and God, I'm so happy to be done with the series, my God. I'm over-exaggerating, I didn't hate it that much. I gave it a two and a half. So I'll just give my general thoughts because to be honest, I just wanna kinda end this video on um, a little bit of a rant, if that's okay. I think that Assassin's Quest's biggest crime is that it doesn't need to be this big. Do you see this? It's like almost as big as my head. It's like 850 pages, girl. Cut that down. I have to say, there were moments in this book that were really good, but there was so much filler in here. Man, maybe it's just because I don't like Fitz, and, and this is a huge Fitz book. I knew that people liked this one not as much as the others. Uh, personally, I haven't watched yet any reviews, so I don't know why that is, because I think that if you like the other two, you will love this book because it's it's the same thing again. It's Fitz and Night Eyes and the gang and, oh, sorry, not gang, pack. We're in this pack for life. Instead of being in a castle, this time they're moving through the wilderness. I do think that if you liked the other two books, then the ending of Assassin's Quest will be worth it for you. And I do think that the ending, like the last 150 pages or so, are the strongest part of the entire series. That being said, I really disliked everything else in the series. So even though I liked the payoff, I didn't really like the setup, so it didn't hit me emotionally. Other than Ketrikin, because Ketrikin is my queen, I love her. I really wish we had more time with her because she was actually interesting. The others not so much, in my opinion. Yeah, everyone says how great this series is at character. Yeah, Ketrikin. Overall, even though I gave every single book a rating within the two star range, the series as a whole for me would be a one and a half. And it's because it's not that the quality of the series is bad. It's not like, again, it's the writing is really good, just doesn't suit my taste. It's not that, it's the fact that I pushed through. You know, every time I picked up this book or every time I put in my headphones to listen to the audiobook, I wanted to be doing literally anything else because I hated it. I hated Fitz. I hated Night Eyes. I was listening to it and it was torture. It was torture. I feel like even though the quality in the series kind of increased as the books went on, especially with the ending, because I didn't want to be reading this, my dislike of it increased disproportionately. Does that make sense? And so I just, man, I really didn't want to pick this up ever. And so as a whole, the series for me is a one and a half star. That's my Opinion! Don't come for me, I'm just speaking my truth. But speaking my truth, I want to talk about some spoilers uh, because hopefully I can like redeem myself because I have things that I think were good that I just can't talk about without spoiling the book. So first of all, I love Burich. Burich Ketrikin are my two favorite characters in the series. Burich at the start uh, talking about like his alcoholism and his relationship to chivalry and the entire patient situation from his side, how he felt inadequate and stuff like that really, really hit me. I thought that that chapter was probably the best chapter in the entire 4 series trilogy. What I really want to get to is the reason this book didn't need to be 800 
fucking pages long, is because every single one of the plot points in this book is a self-made problem that they could have solved during Royal Assassin. Fitz, bro, don't you think it would have been easier to stage an accident while he was a prince, while you were not suspected in the keep? Don't you think that? Body found floating by the docks, heard of it? Okay, Chade, maybe you wouldn't convince because like he's an old man stuck in his ways. You are a volatile teenager. You're telling me it took you fake dying to stage an attack on Regal? The entire time I was like, I would not have to be reading an 800 plus page book right now if they were smart and royal assassin. And that's my truth. That's one thing. Second thing, there is a moment when they're back in Jampe where Fitz gets annoyed that he flung back into the center of everyone else's scheming plans and whatever and he just wants to go to Molly and their child and or live his cottage core girl lifestyle with them and he's so annoyed that once again he's at the center of all these plots and he has no agency and I'm like girl yeah that's my literal fucking problem with this with this entire series. I'm watching your life. You're not doing anything. You're so not interesting to follow. You have zero personality other than, oh, I'm a king's man and oh, I love dogs. I couldn't stand him. Oh, and Molly. I love Molly. That's another one. He has three moods, I swear. But yeah, when, when he was reflecting and like talking about his frustrations, I was like, at least he's self-aware. At least he's self-aware, oh my god. Maybe this does work, you know, for especially the framing of the story of, oh, it's older Fitz writing down his story, blah, 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 okay. I think that it once again goes back to the fact that this writing style and this like format of storytelling doesn't like really work for me because it feels very classic fantasy. You know, this is a story, this isn't real life. It just felt like those things happened because that's the story that Robin Hobb wanted to tell. Especially in the end when it comes back and we have that kind of zoom out of, you know, the flash forward of, oh, this is what happened to Regal and this is what happened to Ketrikin and this is what happened to Molly and Burrich and now they have kids and I'm a hermit and- Oh, look at us, we're in love and happy and not dead inside. Get both of you. I feel like that sort of zoom out happens a lot in and then they live the ever happily ever after sort of stories. I never really felt the stakes. I never, oh, okay, no, that's a lie. I did feel the stakes in that final battle, I guess, with Will and the Coterie in the stone statue garden. Uh, I thought that was really great. Now, another thing that kind of made me rethink the series, and it was when the fool tells Fitz that he knows how Regal perceives the situation. Even though my friend Diego did tell me that this is an unreliable narrator and that Regal is like a cartoonish villain because we are seeing this through Fitz's eyes. Okay, like I heard him, but I don't think I really understood that until I had it written out on page that basically Regal sees Fitz the way Fitz sees Regal as this like cartoonish evil character that enters his life just to destroy everything. That, I, I don't know, that just really put it in my head the extent of the bias. It is an artistic choice. I can respect it as an artistic choice. I can also say that it doesn't suit my personal preference. But yeah, all in all, if you love this series, I'm super jealous. I will still continue on to Life Ship Traders because I promised my friends that I would try life ship and that I would only quit Realm of the Elderlings if I don't like life ship. Look out for that video sometime early next year. Hopefully I like it more than the Farseer trilogy. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.